Hey folks, uh, this lesson is the second part of module 15.6, our integrated math class, um, and it's more on proofs with parallelograms, okay? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So proofs with parallelograms, okay? So here's our first proof. So this picture is given on page 790. All right, so uh, uh, let me just slide that up, get some room right there. Okay, so it looks like there's seven steps. Let's go ahead and fill in um, uh, the free points right there. There's some free points. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is, just like the last one, we did this, I think we got um, uh, on the last one that, that uh, B and D were congruent. I think, you guys, but... Repetition is good, you guys, okay? So let's go ahead and, and um, uh, state what's on the obvious. We've got parallel lines right here because it's a parallelogram. That's just definition of a parallelogram. Notice we uh, put the arrows on it so we can, it's training our brains to see that these guys are parallel. If we didn't have it, okay, they look parallel, but uh, as soon as you put those arrows in, then you know that they're parallel, okay? Definition of a parallelogram, okay. And then like the last proof, we went ahead and drew this segment right through here. And the reason why we can draw a segment through two points is any two points determines a line right there. Okay, now we're going to get these two triangles congruent. So just like the last proof, I'm going to say this angle equals this angle. And because we got this parallel line with this parallel line cut by this transversal. And then from these parallel lines cut by the same transversal, this angle equals this angle right here. Okay, so... Uh, alternate interior angles are congruent right there. All right, so uh, ADB is congruent to uh, CBD. So here's my one arc and one arc, and then uh, the other ones are, I'm labeling with two arcs right there. Okay, now we got to mark it. I know, don't assume it, so let's mark this. We're going to say that DB is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So there we go. We just put that in right there. All right, now by angle side angle is congruent to angle side angle. Uh, these triangles are congruent, okay? So it doesn't matter the order that you put the first triangle, ABD, so A. B, D, so we went from no arcs to two arcs to one arc, so we got to go uh, no arcs to two arcs to one arc right there, so that's it right there, and then of course CPCTC, so always after congruent triangles, if you have another step, sometimes you just want to prove that they're congruent, but if you have another step, then uh, then we just uh, we want to say that those guys are, uh, this is always CPCTC, so I was trying to uh, open up a textbook while I was talking and I got a little a little distracted there. Okay, so given this one's not in the book, I found this one online, so it's just another parallelogram, okay? And um, it's given that uh, this is uh, equal to this right here, so what we're going to do is get this triangle here congruent to this triangle over here, then we can say the CPCTC. Okay, this one has six steps. Let's go ahead and put in the free points right there. Now, one of the steps is this other given. So you can put it in here and make it only five steps if you want, but, but let's just deal with the parallelogram first. The parallelogram gives me this side equal to this side, and that's a part of the triangle, okay? And also, this angle equals this angle because opposite angles are congruent, and so are opposite sides, okay? So let's go ahead and say AD. Now notice we went from the angle with the number on it to the little corner out here, so we're going to say CB, okay? So AD is congruent to CB because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. And then opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, so uh, D is congruent to B. And then let's go ahead and throw this down. Where'd that come from? Well, that was the other given, so that's um, uh, given information right there. Okay, now check this out. Side, angle, side. Okay, so we go from one to angle to two marks. I don't know if I did it in that order. It doesn't matter. Okay, good. So I went uh, D, E, A. So I went uh, from the angle mark towards the two marks and then to the number. So the angle mark, two arcs, and then the number B, F, C. Okay, and then of course C, P, C, T, C. All right, all right, let's do a little review here. So we got this figure right here. We have an exterior angle of a triangle. The exterior angle, this exterior angle, equals the sum of these remote interior angles. All right, 8x plus x is 9x, and then 14 plus 18 is 32. Subtract 32, divide by 9, and uh, x is not the answer. It says find the measure of angle u. So right here, we're going to plug in 12 right there, so 8 times 12. 
Uh, plus 14 is 96 plus 14, so 110. The measure of angle U is 110. All right, so here's another one here. So it looks like we've got a couple of triangles right here. Okay, let's get this little unknown angle right here. By this triangle right here, the triangles add up to 180, triangle sum theorem. So we'll just call this angle, angle X right here. Okay, combine like terms, and then uh, subtract the 126. So this angle is 54. All right, and it looks like we have a straight line down here. Straight lines with this angle plus this angle plus this angle, we'll call it angle Y, is equal to 180. Straight lines are 180. So just go ahead and solve. We get y equals 45, and then one more time, we've got a triangle over here that adds up to 180. Okay, so go ahead and add those up and subtract, and we get the measure of angle 1 to be uh, 35. Okay, now there's your assignment if you are in our class. If you are in my class, you've done a couple of those before, but that's okay. Repetition is good. Just like uh, learning to play basketball or any kind of sport, you got to practice, practice, practice. Anyways, hope you're doing well. Take care.